Hello, welcome back to Daniel Fritz Mathematics. And today, we're going to talk about the phase shift and sinusoidal curve fitting. Let's talk about a particular problem. And we want to graph the sinusoidal function of the form y is equal to a times sine omega x minus this symbol here, which is considered pronounced as phi or phi in some cases, right? Some cases people pronounce it as phi, some people pronounce it as phi, um, plus b, which is the shift, the uh, vertical shift in the graph. Now, we saw that the graph of y is equal to a times sine omega times x, in which omega was greater than zero, having an amplitude absolute value of a, and a period of t is equal to 2 pi divided by omega. One cycle can be drawn as x, it varies from 0 to what? 2 pi or omega, or equivalently as omega times x, which varies from 0 to 2 pi. So one cycle of y is equal to sine omega x, comma, okay? in which omega is greater than zero, we have a little figure here like this as such, right? This is a figure, a basic graph of the sine. And we're talking about the amplitude from uh, negative a to uh, positive a, in which all the values of, of this graph lies between negative a and positive a. And this is why we also, uh, say that the period is equal to t, which is equal to what? 2 pi over omega. So from here to here is the actual period. And of course, all the values lie between what? Negative a and positive a. Now, let's look at this. Let's discuss the graph of y is equal to a times sine uh, omega x minus phi or phi. It can be also, it can also be written as in this way, right? As we factor out the omega here, well, we, we actually factor out the omega here for this particular problem, because we're going to explain some things in just a second when we have y is equal to a times psi, in which here we bring out this what? Omega times x minus what? Now this is going to be phi divided by omega. So we're Omega is greater than zero, and phi, the Greek letter, of course, we talked about this. We can say phi or phi, it's okay. Our real numbers, the graph will be the sine curve with the amplitude, absolute value of A, as what? Omega times x minus phi. It varies from zero to two pi. And one period will be traced out, and this period will begin with, and here we did some solving here, where we have omega x minus phi is equal to zero, or when we say omega, we took this and we took phi and we what? We, we added it to both sides. We added it to both sides, and as we added it to both sides, we came up with that expression, and then when we divided when we divide it uh, and solve, we're trying to solve for x here, we divide it omega to both sides, x is equal to what? Phi divided by omega. Also, it will end with here when you have this equal to 2 pi, setting this equal to 2 pi, and also doing the math here. And then, once you do all the solving, x is also going to be what? 2 pi over omega plus phi divided by omega. Now, with this going on, this is where the actual period would end in that sense right there. And so we go here and we see the phase shift. Now, look at this normalcy here. We have uh, the regular sine, the regular sine function, y is equal to s, y is equal to s sine, sine times x, right? Sine times x. And then as we do, from here, it shifts to this point here, just like so. This is what? This is your phase shift. So that's going to be phi divided by 
omega, and this is the period. This is the period T right here. You see that? So looking at one cycle of y is equal to a sine omega x minus 5, and a being greater than 0 and omega being greater than 0 and phi being greater than 0. This is the expression that we have right here. When we see the graph of y is equal to a times sine omega x minus phi is equal to, and this is our expression here. This can be written like this or like this. And it's the same as the graph of y is equal to sine omega x, see? And we can actually write this in terms of that too. Right? That's where we can write that in terms of that. And here, we, we look at this, except it has been shifted now here. It has been shifted phi divided by omega units. See? That's where you see this to this. To the what? Right, if phi is what? Greater than zero, and to take, and to the, I'm sorry, and to the left, it'll be phi less than zero. So we see that. So this, is, in this case, is being shifted to the right. So in this case, uh, phi is greater than zero. Now, this number of uh, phi divided by omega is called, again, we repeat this, is, and we emphasize this, it's called the phase shift. So this is the phase shift of the graph. Y is equal to A times sine omega x minus phi. Now, for the graph, equal to this, and for also y is equal to a times cosine omega uh, times x minus phi, in which omega is greater than zero, here we have the amplitude, which is the absolute value of a, and here we have the period, which is t is equal to what? 2 pi over omega. And the phase shift, the phase shift, our favorite uh, number right now for this particular lesson is phi divided by omega or phi divided by omega. And the phase shift to the left now, which is phi uh, less than zero, and to the right, phi will be what? Greater than zero. Now, let's go over here to the next board here. Look at an example of sorts. What we want to do here with this problem is we want to find the amplitude, the period, and phase shift of y is equal to 3 times sine of 2x minus pi and graph the function. So we want to use the same four steps, remember from the previous videos, used to graph the sine solar function of the form y is equal to a times sine omega times x or y is equal to a times cosine omega times x given, the pre given from the previous videos. Y'all remember that? So step one, we want to always compare. We have y is equal to 3 times sine 2x minus pi is equal to this, as we say, 3 times 2 times x minus pi over 2. We see that, right? And what, we, what do we do? When we do this, we are comparing, taking this, and actually lining it up with this here, as you see, or lining this up with this. So basically, this is what? This is omega. Omega is 2, remember? Remember we had our expressions from previous videos. This number here represented omega. So this is omega times x minus what? Here in this case, the phase shift is what? Phi divided by omega. Now, oftentimes, in this particular case, phi is usually equal to pi. So in this case, it's going to be what? Pi over 2, in which omega is 2, so it's going to be what? Pi over 2 in this particular case. So 3 sine times 2 times x minus pi over 2, which is this expression here. And it's compared to this because everything is what? Basically plugged in and represented as such, respectively. We find that a is equal to 3. Omega is equal to 2, and phi is equal to what? Pi. 
And the graph is a sine curve with the amplitude, absolute value of A, which is equal to 3, and the period T is 2 pi divided by omega, and it's equal to 2 pi divided by 2, which here we got the what? The period of what? Pi. And the phase shift, the phase shift, this number here, the phase shift is going to be pi over 2. So step 2, we go to the graph, put this here, y is equal to sine. 2x minus pi will be, will lie between, there we go, negative 3 and 3. Just like the little graph we seen there earlier where that's represented as, as A, right? So those, all those values are going to be lying between, are going to be lying between negative 3 and positive 3 on the y-axis that is, right? So um, what we have here is that negative 3 and 3 on the y-axis. We have one cycle that will begin at what? At the, at the phase shift, uh, pi over 2. And it will end, remember we did the solving equations over there? With pi over omega plus 2 pi over omega, which is represented here in this case as pi over 2 plus pi. So that's the phase shift plus the period, which is going to equal to what? 3 pi over 2, which is like the ending point of that, of that phase, thing, that shift. So to find the five key points, divide the interval, remember we did that? Divide the interval into what? Four subintervals. In this case, from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So each of the lengths is going to be what? Pi divided by 4, and then you're going to add pi over 4 to what? Starting out with the initial point there. Two. So we're showing these. These are the x coordinates. This is the first sec or x coordinate, the second, the third, and the fourth, and what? The fifth. So we have pi over 2 plus uh, pi over 4, which is equal to 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, which is 4 pi over 4, which is uh, simplified down to pi. And pi over 1, or you say pi over, pi over 1, plus pi over 4 is equal to 5 pi over 4. And 5 pi over 4 plus pi over 1 is equal to 3 pi over 2. So these are your x coordinates. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi uh, over 4, and 3 pi over 2. Now, what we do, you remember from the last video, it's always probable to take the actual uh, basic sine function here, and which we did right here, this is very close, and take A and times it by each of the y, uh, y coordinates of the first basic sine graph. So I'm showing you this here. So it's going to start, say, A, which is 3, times 0 of the y, uh, of the y coordinate here, this graph. 3 times 0 will be 0. And then, of course, 3 times 1 will be 3, right? And then 3 times 0 will be 0. And then 3 times negative 1 right here will be negative 3. And 3 times 0 is equal to what? 0. So now we have our key points right there. We have our key points. Pi over 2, 0. 3 pi over 4, and 3 pi and 0. And 5 pi over 4, and negative 3 and 3 pi over 2 and 0. So there's our key points. So we take those key points and we actually do what? We actually plot the curve, like, right? you know, plot these points and, get, and then we draw a line, get a nice smooth curve. Now notice I drew the regular, the regular basic uh, sine function here and then actually look at the shift right here. Look at shifts and also what? It also takes a what? A vertical stretch here, right? You see what I'm saying? So with this here, you got, remember from the previous video when we did transformations and stuff. Basically this here, this is going to be a vertical, uh, this is going to be a vertical transformation because this is going to be what? All these forms are going to be what? This, all these, not forms, but um, points or values are going to be between negative 3 and positive 3. You see that? So it's going to be between negative 3 and positive 3. And so the shift, the phase shift, is going to be what? We're here, 2 uh, pi over 2. 
So you see the shift, and also you see the uh, the vertical uh, transformation here from that. See, so this here, this regular graph here, the basic graph, the ampl the amplitude is one. Here in this particular case, the amplitude is shifted three because you're multiplying three to the equation, right? So now, as we go down here, we're going to what? We're going to actually we have the graph, and now all we're simply going to do now from here, we have this point here, right? We have this this uh, period, and also all we do now is extend, extend our graph, right, in either direction. Well, which actually, of course, this is coming from uh, negative infinity onto the regular period and onto onto positive infinity. So we actually want to take this here and extend our graph in both directions. That's how that's actually done. So we see that. And now we're going to have another problem. We're going to be dealing with the cosine. We have, we're talking about the sine function. Now we're going to talk about the cosine function in the other room.